Hey guys, it's May May, and if you know me, you know I love a good punch or a good tool. But I like for my punches and tools to do more than one thing, and tonight I'm going to show you how to use this banner punch to make anything but banners. So let's get started. Now stick around through the video because closer to the end, I'm going to show you how to make this star using the banner punch and you're going to love it. Okay, so let's start with something else first. Let's start with a cute little Christmas tree. Actually, let's start with two trees for one work. Okay, so we're going to do the work one time and get two really cute Christmas trees that we can use on a card or any, any place else we want to use them. So let me show you what this is. This is scrap. Okay, this is leftover cardstock I had from another project, and each one of these has a different measure, which we'll put in the description, but this one is three, three and a half, four, four and a half, and five. Now, every one is one and a half inches tall, and the reason for that is because I want to use the one and a half inch part of my banner punch to make this happen. So here's what you're going to do. We're going to get two trees from this, okay? We're going to put this guy in at the one and a half, and you're going to have to kind of push it up in there and then punch. Then you'll see you've got the banner on one side. Now we're going to turn it around and go in again. And this time you're only going to have the little tail sticking out. So take your time to make sure you get it into the slot where it needs to go. Up here it has the little indention area for this guy to live. So take the time to get it there and then punch. And then pull this guy back out. And this is what you'll end up with. And that's what we're looking for. So we'll put that one up there. Now what I want you to do is punch both ends of all the other pieces. All right, so there's those pieces, banner punched on either end, and I want to show you these. When I was playing around doing this, I was like, oh my goodness, look, these can be little village houses. Look how cute these are. You could make a little village, you could stack them up, you could, um, you know, dimensionally lay them on top of each other, and it would be so cute. So don't forget your little offshoots to your little scraps, because they are perfect for something as well. All right, back to these guys. Now you'll need your trimmer. I'm going to use my little trimmer for this because I really don't need the big one here. What we're going to do, because we want to get two cards for one work, we're going to cut these in half at the point there that the banner punch creates. So you'll just lay the shortest or I guess the deepest point of the punch in on your cut line. And then I like to sink my blade to kind of hold it in place and then go up and down. And you'll see here what we end up with are two pieces that look like this. Do you see where we're going? Let's set these guys aside and let's do all of them the same way. So where the point dips in, line that up on your cut line, sink your blade, cut up and down, and that'll get you two pieces. So do that with every one of your strips. Now, depending on the cardstock that you used, you can get two trees that are identical or you can get two trees that are different. And what I mean by that is you can have one that looks like this. Obviously, I'm laying out two. Or you can flip this one over and get the back side and get a second tree. So if you didn't want them to be the same, as long as you're using double-sided cardstock, you can do this. I don't really mind if mine are the same, and the reason is they're not going on the same card anyway. But see how we get two completely different trees? Pretty cool, right? All right, I'm going to move this one aside, and let's go to a card base. Now, I'm just going to use this piece here, and what I'm going to do is just kind of dry run, lay my tree out where I want it, so I'm not gluing anything yet. And honestly, if you wanted to, you could glue this to another piece and then pop this guy up on the card. But look at this cute tree that you're able to get from using that banner punch. I love when a punch does something else. All right, we need another punch. One second. So using another scrap, this time a gold scrap and a star punch, I just punched for myself a little gold star. It's a one inch star and it fits perfectly on the top of our tree. Isn't that adorable? Now I'm going to glue all of this down and then I'm going to show you one more thing you can do. I'm just going to glue this one straight onto a card front. Now the other thing I told you I was going to tell you about is this. If you didn't want this to just be flat cardstock, you could run this piece through an embossing machine and an embossing folder before you glue it down. But for this one, I just wanted to show you simple, flat, glued straight onto a card. Can't you imagine so many places you need a Christmas tree and how many ways you can make this one work? It's a good size and it fills up a card front really well. All right, let's look at the second one that we can get from this. Now, you have lots of options. You can lay this guy directly down just like we did the first time, or you might consider 
popping up, maybe laying the first one down and then popping this one up on foam and then laying the second one down flat and then popping the next one up on foam. So you get a little bit of dimension that way. So you can see what I'm saying. So every one would be flat, popped, flat, popped, flat, or, and I think this would be really pretty. You could put this guy here and then the one that goes above it could overlap it slightly. I think that would be pretty. And it would also give you a little more body on the card, a little more thickness. So if we do this like this and just layer them just slightly, I think that would be really, really pretty. And I still have another way to show you how to lay them out. So there's that one. Now, this guy is the smallest I could do in my punch, but you may have a different punch that'll let you go a little smaller so you can try that. But here's something else I saw. If you just sort of wonky these a little bit, you get a whole other look. Do you see how it's not perfect? You can get kind of that, um, I don't know, whimsical look if you do it like that, and that might be your favorite look. I think what I'll do for this one is do the glue down pop up so you can see that, but I wanted to give you some ideas. So let me do that real quick. So for the first one, I'm gluing it straight down, and that's going to get me started here at the bottom of the card. Then this guy will get popped up. So I'll put some dimensional foam on the back of him. And his back is actually the plaid. Then we'll just line him up on top of the last one. Just like so. So we have flat and then popped up. And then this guy's going to go flat. And the next one will get popped up. I was going to use the dark green, but I think I'm going to use this side. I like it better. The dark green kind of blended into the background for me. If you're watching this tonight and you don't know, our Thursday videos that go live at 5.30 p.m. are premiere videos. So if you're watching this during the 5.30 Central Standard Time time, then you can join the chat that goes live while we are premiering the video. And right after, we have our live after show. So if you want to be part of our live show, stick around for right after this one. And we do a live show where we sit and chat with you guys about all things going on in and around Meme World and... We even show you some across the miles that you guys have sent in. All right, so let me show you. Do you see the movement here? And you could do this opposite. If you'd rather have this one popped up and these flat, you can do that. But this way, it's not completely flat. And we can add a star. And I think I'll pop the star up. And that will even even out the top. So we'll have the same amount of popped up and laying down. What I mean by that is this one's popped up, this one's popped up, and then our star is popped up. So that way everything will balance. Isn't that so cool? Let me put that on a card base. Now there's so much more you can add to this. You could add a trunk if you would like. You could put a snow bank. So much more you can do. I just wanted you to see how to create the two for one Christmas tree. Now I want to show you how to do very similar and create one tree with lots of dimension. So same punch. We're going to use the same one. And I've done the same dimensions. I've done three three and a half, four, four and a half, and five. And what we're going to do here is do that same punch to get us started. But we're going to punch both ends of every one of our strips. Now that we got both ends of these um, punched in our punch, now we're going to go to our scoreboard, or you can use your trimmer if you've got the scoreboard blade. And I'm going to put this guy in, close it down, and I'm going to score the line instead of cut the line this time. So you can see we're going to fold it like that. So you want to do that to every one of your strips. Now what I'm going to do is just fold them. And I think I'm going to crease them. They're going to pop up, but I want them to be a little bit tight. So I'm going to just fold and crease them like this. And then you can watch this dimensional tree come together. I think this is going to be kind of cool. Because on the card, you'll be able to see inside as well. And you really won't need foam tape or anything to make this happen. Because I think the fold... And, you know, the card being in an envelope is going to, going to be what we need to hold our little dimensional tree. Isn't that cute? All right, let's put this on a card front. We're going to do the same thing. We're just going to put glue on the bottom. And this time, I'm just going to put it on the back. Line this guy up at the bottom of the card. And build just like we did before. Now, you could tuck one if you want. I'm just going to kind of bump mine up against each other or, you know, let them kiss, let the paper kiss. And that way, it looks kind of tight. And you just want to make sure you're about the same on both sides as far as hanging over each side. About like that and press it. And look, you're going to get that. Isn't that neat? So many ways to make a Christmas tree with this banner punch. 
And again, I'm going to put a little star on top, but I'm going to pop it up with some foam. Just kind of let that overlap a bit. And look at that. Isn't that cute? So we get this look. And from the bottom, the side, all the way around, it's a Christmas tree with dimension. Let's put that on a card front. All right, so let's look at our three different Christmas trees. So we have the flat. We have the one with a little dimension. I just noticed these trees are upside down. Somebody noticed it already, and it's killing you. We're good. We can put a sentiment over it. This one has the alternating popped up, and then this one is the dimensional that kind of comes out like that. I think that's kind of cool. kind of looks like a louvered tree. Now, as fun as these are, i got to show you how to make the star. I did not mean for that to rhyme, but it did. Let's make this guy. So for the next way we're going to use our banner punch without making a banner is these snowflakes or stars. You can call them whichever one you want, but I want to show you how to do this in different sizes. This is the largest one I've made so far, but you can make in all different sizes, and I'll show you how to be able to size them up for whatever you need. But let's make one of these guys. So for the one I want to show you today, I'm doing two inches and one and a half inches. You have other options here. You have the two and a half that you can use also. All you need to do when you're designing your star is this. You need to have one in one size of the banner and one in the other. And this one that's going to lay on top needs to be half an inch smaller. So here's what I mean by that. If you want to make a two and a half inch wide base, then you want to use the two inch banner and just make sure that whatever the length these are, they're half an inch different from each other. That's all there is to it. That'll make sense when I make this because you'll see how it works. So for me, I've got the two inch ones. So I'm going to punch these using the two inch guidelines and I'm going to punch both ends of both pieces. Then I'm going to take these guys, they're one and a half inch wide and I'm going to punch them in the one and a half inch guideline. Now, you'll notice I stack these guys up. I've noticed with my punch, the more I'm using it, my thinner card stocks work better. I get a cleaner cut when I stack them. So I'm just stacking them on top of each other and punching them at the same time. Also, I don't know if I mentioned this, my green pieces here are five inches long, and these were four and a half when we started. So just so you'll know, we'll put those measurements in the description as well. All right, let me show you. Don't blink. This is one of those projects that if you look away, the star is going to happen before you realize it, okay? So you put one down like this, and you put one on top like that, and boom, there's a star. That's step one. So I'm going to glue these together, and I just put a little glue here in the middle. I've been making these all afternoon. They're so easy and so fun. All you want to do here is just pay attention that you're kind of centered top and bottom, side to side. Doesn't have to be perfect. They're very forgiving. Now, I do want to point something out to you. This is the one we're going to make on video today, but I want you to see these pieces are woven, but I'm using the same side of the cardstock here, okay? These pieces are woven, and I flipped the pieces over so I could get that double pattern. So you can do this either way. It's the same motion. It's just how you want to lay your paper out. All right, so I'm going to go to my trimmer, just like we did earlier, and I'm going to cut these guys in half from those little indented parts of the banner. Just go right here and, punch, and uh, cut these in half. I've said punch all day, so now we're cutting, and i got to get my words right. Let's do this one. Now we can assemble, and this is so easy, you guys. One thing I do like to do is kind of keep them like this. This is just for my brain, especially if I'm going to flip one over and use the other side. You want to kind of keep them together so you know who goes with who. All right, let's start with one. Now I'm going to be weaving these, and because of that, I'm only going to place one down to start, and I'm actually only going to glue it on the top section here. So I'm going to apply some glue right up here, okay? And I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to apply this down with that little bit of glue at the top. And all I want to pay attention to here is that I have the same amount of green showing top and bottom, side and side around that piece. It'll kind of look like when it's done, these were like a die set where you cut the base and the top and stacked them on top of each other. They'll look like they were made to nest together. Now this guy, we're going to put glue at the bottom because we did glue at the top of the other one and we left the bottom loose. On this one, we're going to glue the bottom down and leave the top loose. Again, just make sure you have the same amount of green all the way around. Okay, now we're going to weave. So this piece is going to go under that piece where we left it loose and over where we glued it down, and we're going to check um, spacing around the side as well. And for this one, you can apply glue everywhere because it's ready to be glued all the way down. So I'll just slide underneath my lifted part, place this down, check placement all the way around. That's pretty good. I'm going to take that, 
And then I'll go right under here and apply glue to put that one into place. Now remember, we left the bottom loose here. I'm going to flip it up so we can get to it. Now it'll be this side. So we're going to do the same motion we just did. We'll lift that up so I can get under there, apply glue, and glue this down. You can make these so fast. And if you don't do the weaving part, if you just glue them together and stack them nested like little nested snowflake, you can get this done so quick. And can you imagine how much your grandkids would enjoy this process? It's hard to mess it up. And I've said this to you before, kids like a project where they feel like they've done something like an adult would do. They could make this happen so easy and you end up with a whole bunch of stars. Now you can do a couple things with them. One, like I said here, make this a tag, make it an ornament, make it bigger, make it smaller. You really can only go so small because of the sizes of the punch, but you can always cut these without a punch. They're just strips, remember? Um, also, these will fit on the front of an A2 card. Let me show you. So this is one of the cards we did earlier. Let me show you. If you put this back here, it just fits on an A2. They'd be beautiful on a 6x6 or a 5x7 as a focal point, but at the smallest punch of my punch, they just fit. Now, like I said, you don't have to have the punch. You can make this happen by just making a bunch of banner pieces, but how fun is it when the punch does the work for you? Check this out. Look what all we did today. We did the flat one. We did the alternating dimension. We did the folded one, which is so cool too. And then all of these little stars. I love when one tool can do something it's not even designed for. And that's what this guy did. Now, this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's so many things we can do with this. I want you guys to tell me in the comments what you saw today while I was doing this. Did you see something else we could make? I would love to hear that. And if you enjoy this style of crafting, punch art or using something for something it wasn't intended for, we're going to put a playlist up here for you of some other videos that I've done. So you can click on that and uh, start watching some more. Or if you'd rather just watch my latest video, we'll have it here for you as well. Hey, thanks so much for being here today. And until next time, bye now.